The thoughts, ideas, and opinions you are about to hear are those of our guests and not necessarily those of the Beyond Expectation podcast. We reserve the right to take the creative liberty to tell our stories in the most entertaining way possible so you are not advised to accept everything presented as fact. All right, well, we're back from uh, enjoying some delicious pizza and just taking a nice nice little break as well. So that was some great pizza, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Brad, for ordering that. So shout yeah. out to our third uh, third guy right here. He's our man. Shout out to him. <laughs> but uh, back where we were, we were talking, um, what was the question that we were going to lead off? Um, so what, what we want to talk about, so we've been talking about influencers and, uh, you know, all about that. And what we see in you is that you are not an influencer per se, but you are an influential person. And so we want to break that Thank down. You. Thank you. First and foremost. Yeah. Um, cause people ask me all the time, what is exactly that you do? Uh huh. And, and it's a kind of like a, it's a jarring question because I don't really have an, an exact answer. I, I tell people first and foremost, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, in the words of young Jeezy, um, when I see opportunity, I'm an opportunist. And I mean that in a good way, because you have to remember words can be flipped. Sure. You know what I'm saying? De definitions can be flipped too. Uh -huh. Now what's an opportunist? Um, there's people who are like, Oh, don't work with that person. They're opportunistic. And that means that they try to get over on you. They're yeah. going to use you. They're going to steal your leads. They're going to get, get into your network. They're going to backdoor you. Um, but I look at it as a positive thing. Like when somebody, okay, I'm going to give you two stories and they're, they're probably going to watch, um, I've had two deals on the table in the last uh, month. One was a project where this promotion team with this rapper wanted to spend about a $25,000 budget on a venue. And I knew the venue connect and he's been running the show. And I tried contacting him for three fucking days. And I was like texting like, yo, hey, let's talk about business, this, that, and the third. I'll get back to you at 1.30 when I get off my last gig, da, da, da. give me the runaround following day. Hey, everything good. Left me on red. And then the third day, the last day, I, I think I called him I'm like, yo, is everything good? Like I, I have to leave for a trip soon, business, this and that. And the third He's like, yo, you have to understand. I got hella shit going on. I'm like, bro. And I'm thinking I'm cool. Right. I'm like, I, I, first of all, he's not my man. This is somebody I'm working with, but I'm like, I just saw your story last night and you were at a bar with some bitches. Mm. And little did he know it was a $25,000 play. And again, when people complain about being broke, about being the economy, being, being tough, about this, that, and the third, I'm going through hella shit. Well, if you would have answered your fucking phone, bro, we could have had a $25,000 play. Now, would all that money go to him? No. That's going to go towards the bottle service, the girls, the event, the, the artists, who are the models, whoever, whatever, whatever it was going to construct to. I was trying to get a contract done with him. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking money to some people. Yeah. Especially when I found out what he was only charging for one night. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to air too much about him. And I, and I, and I appreciate him that he was kind of respectful to me, but he kind of was like angry at me. I felt like, like I was doing something wrong, but I'm like, bro, be angry at yourself that you're not handling business the way you should. And he apologized, but he's like, you can't keep talking to me this way. And I'm like, I'm a businesswoman. Now, if I was a man, you wouldn't be trying to check me like this. Mm. But as a woman, it's like, oh, who do you think you're talking to? So it's like, I got to kind of be careful. And it is kind of hard sometimes as a woman to be yeah. taken seriously. I know Nicki Minaj has talked about that, you know, and then there's another instant. Um, I met somebody who's a photographer. I really respect him. Great person. I told him all these ideas and different people that he can book. And I've been reaching out to him saying I got some great projects. I have some models who want to pay for work. And I even asked him, I'm like, is everything cool? He's left me on scene. Mm. And I'm like thinking, I'm not trying to flirt with you. I'm not trying to get over on you. I'm trying to get you money. And I even told him this in the text. So whatever bullshit he's going through, which is probably financial, if you would just pick up the fucking phone and communicate with me, you could have had $500 yesterday. Wow. So when I tell people, when someone's talking about money, and again, people always talk about money. Yeah. You, and your job is to, to seek the opportunity to see if it's real or if it's fake. Yeah. You're going to know when you get the check, if it's real, when you get the cash, if it's real. I don't bullshit people. Mm -hmm. I listen, I tell people I'm an opportunist. Okay. If I see someone saying, yo, you come to the shoot right now, I got $500 for you. I'm already on my fucking way. I'll do my makeup in the car on the freeway. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, sometimes you have to understand when 
opportunity is knocking on the door, open it. You know, a lot of people make excuses to why they are in these situations. Sometimes you're your own demise. Yeah. You're not really j jumping at these opportunities. You're not taking the chance and the risk. Sometimes people don't even want to, like you said, make that first move to even, uh, you know, like you said, take that risk to see if it's well worth it. Because if it's one thing that I learned up until now is I would rather live life knowing that I tried to instead of living life and saying, I wish I would have done that. That part. Honest truth. It's, because part. it's like with a podcast, right? Yeah. I've always told you that. I At least I'm putting my effort into this, hoping that something is going to stick to the wall, which I know it will. I know it will. Yeah, I'm, I'm, something's I'm confident. going to. So, something's going to, right? But at least I'm taking that chance to do it and say that at least I tried. And I can live with that. And I, I tell people, that. you miss every shot you don't take. Yep. Just like in basketball. You can shoot 100 fucking times. You might make 75 of them. You might only make 12 of them, yeah. but you miss every shot you don't fucking take, that, bro. That's what people don't think about, right? They think about the money that they did make. They always forget about the money they didn't make. Yes. And then they use their mistakes and failures as reasons why they can't go for, oh, well, I've been burned or this and that. Like we were talking about crypto a little bit earlier. Yeah. There's a lot of people who made a lot of money in crypto. Mm -hmm. They got in at the right time. They invested when it was low. When it went up, they pulled out. Great. Um, I always just tell people crypto is a great way to make money. Just know who you're getting in bed with. Do your research on the investors. I'm sure that um, Brett could speak a little bit more about some good things that you guys probably have already talked about on the podcast or you will in the future or the next yeah. time I come out here because I'm definitely interested in learning about that. I, I made some bad investments with it's, crypto. It's dangerous territory. It is. It, it is. is. It's volatile. It's, volat it's volatile. It's volatile. That's part of it. But then the other part, what you're talking about is you can easily get caught up in uh, a project that's going to go down where the the developers have all this money. They, they've they uh, had this bag waiting. They're waiting for us to put the money in. As soon as we do, boom, they leave us with the bag. Yes. They leave us yeah, and, with it, and it can happen. And sometimes it's like, I feel like it's like a 50-50. It's gambling. It's, it's yeah. literally li legal yep. gambling, you know? Yep. And, and I tell people, um, I listen to a lot of finance uh, podcasts, um, different, uh, what's that one woman? She's lesbian. I fucking love her. She's like the guru of finance. Uh, yeah, You I know, know who, who I'm talking, talking about, about and yeah. I'm blanking out, but I watch her and she says, anytime it comes to any investment, whether it's real estate, crypto, stocks, bonds, um, businesses, at restaurants, anything that you invest in, make sure that um, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. And that goes back to the multiple streams of income. 100%. Don't ever, like, if you have $100,000 to your name, don't just put that $100,000 into real estate or that $100,000 into crypto. Do small chunks. I, that way, if it fails, you're just like, all right, I took that loss. It's okay. Yep. But you're not like, fuck. Like, I, I, I'll talk about my situation with my homie. He was up $187,000. And I know because he sent me this screenshot on uh, Robin Hood when he was doing crypto hardcore. Mm -hmm. Now, this is when crypto was booming, when he was joining these discords. He was learning from all these gurus. He was paying to part, be a part of these channels. And I kept telling him, like, bro, I would just cash the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't. You're being a hater. You don't understand crypto. You need to do your research. I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, just fucking pull out the money. If it's in your Robin Hood, cash it the fuck out. Yeah. I kept telling him that because I'm like, bro, if I'm up 180 bands, I'm getting the fuck out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's like when you're at the fucking poker table and you're up so high, you gotta know, you know what I'm saying, when to fucking pull your chips, bro. Yep. And he was like, "No, I'm in this for the long haul." And I, and I got, I got the ambition. I understood. When I tell you that man owes me six hundred fucking dollars now, he went broke. Yeah. And I love him. Yep. And again, these are these are things that happen to everyday people. Yeah. I have a Instagram follower, female. She was uh, meeting some guy on a dating app, right? Mm -hmm. Handsome Asian dude. Oh, yeah, you're so beautiful. This and that. Let's go on a date. You know how he got her to invest in his crypto company that he created himself? Oh, no. <laughs> he, was a, he was an engineer. He knew how to create a fake crypto app, <laughs> a fake crypto coin, a fake everything. And he got like 20 bands out of wow. her. And he was fucking her, dating her. He would pay the little $100 dinners. He finessed her. He fucked her good. Probably ate her pussy from the back. I don't know what he fucking <laughs> did. But he kept the hey. money rolling in. Yeah. Oh, we just need another 5000 baby. Oh, yeah. And he lied about her profits. He was like, oh, you're up 100000 Oh, it's up to a hundred. He was inflating the numbers. Yep. And yeah. so she's investing more. She said she like ca total hard cash. She invested 20000 of her own savings. Yeah. One day he just That's goes blank. 
blocks her. She can't contact him. She can't find him. She doesn't know where he lives. I'm like, first of all, who fucks someone where you don't even know where they fucking live wow. for that man in town and <laughs> gives that type of money? If I'm giving you $20, I know where the fuck you live. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that much. I don't play about my motherfucking money. Oh, I've ran up on dudes. Oh, let me tell you a hood story real quick. Because Roxy gangsta as fuck. <laughs> Roxy gangsta as fuck. So, you know, back in the day when I was in my little weed game shit, um, we found out that a mutual homie of ours owed everybody some money. And you know how the weed game is? People are pussy. Let's just be real. They don't, they talk a lot of shit. They don't back it up. Right. And I'm a woman, okay? I don't own any fucking guns, okay? I, I can't legally, I, I can't speak on it, but I'm not allowed to be <laughs> around any weapons. But with that being said, I wasn't afraid to muscle him. I said, so you're telling me he owes me X amount. He owes Peter, Paul, James, and Jose. And I'm just giving blanket names. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. And y'all are grown men about two feet taller than me, about 60 pounds heavier, and you're afraid to approach him? And one of the guys like, yeah, I see him on Snapchat all the time posting at this casino. He's gambling with our money. I said, so why don't you pull up on him? They're yeah. like, bro, we don't want that heat. We have wives and kids. And I understand. You don't want to go to jail over, you know, $8,000, $10,000. He owed me the least, and I pulled up on his ass at yeah. the casino. Oh, I pulled the fuck up. <laughs> I, I was like, let me know the next time you see him. Because people are stupid. Like I said, always posting in real time. Yep. I said, give me the drop. He's like, okay, it's this. And I'm not going to say because I don't want to get in trouble. I pulled up at this motherfucking casino. I, I was like dressed like in a trench coat, like on some fucking Matrix shit. <laughs> I was my boots, all black attire, like a fucking assassin. Yeah. He's at the poker table, the high roller table. Mind you, he owes all these people thousands of dollars. And I tapped him on the shoulder. And, you know, there's cameras and guards everywhere always looking. I'm like, hey, baby, acting like I'm his girl. And he's like, yeah. shook, because he knows he owes me money. Yeah. He's like, hey. And I'm like, let you, I'll let you finish your game. I'm going to be right here. We're waiting outside. And he was like, oh, shit. He knew it was time. He sh shit. Mind you, I was by myself. I was by myself the yeah. whole fucking time. I said, we're waiting outside. So he knew that any exit he went out of, he could have possibly got got mm. and not like shot or nothing like that. Right. But I pumped fear in him in that moment. Yeah. So he finished his little game. He had a wad of cash. You're going to trip the fuck out. He, he walks up to me and he's like shaking. He's like, hey, what's going on? I was like, so I heard that you owe A, B, C, and D and me some money. What's up? He's like, rocks, like shit's hard. I said, shit's hard when you're here gambling our money, right? <laughs> I pulled up his baby mama's address. Oh, oh my God. I swiped and I showed him pictures of his kids. Oh. Remember, you air, this is why I tell people quit posting your motherfucking kids on social media. Because mm. you never know. And again, this is dirty. I should have, this is a long time ago, okay? So don't, this is don't, old Roxy. Statue limitations. Old Roxy. Statue limitations. This is, this is before Roxy was saved, okay? And yeah. mind you, I never made any threats on his kids. I just showed him some pictures. Yeah. I watched too many narco movies. Right. Okay? <laughs> I, I, but I gave the address because I had it. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I got it from somebody. But anyways, he was like, please do not come to their house, please. Because he didn't live with them. He's like, please, I'm begging you, do not touch my children. I said, I'm not going to do shit. I don't make idle threats. I said, run me your money. He's like, what? He's like, this is all the money I have to manage. I said, how much you fucking have? I was like, follow me over here. We went by the bathrooms. He had a fucking envelope with hundreds. You know, it was only like $6,500. I said, thank you put it in my bag. I said, if you ever try to come after me, I'm telling you, one of them is gone. Wow. Damn. Ugh. I walked the fuck out. I put, I put a picture of it in the group chat. I said, I'll break you off a little bit. And they're like, Roxy, you did not fucking wow. do this shit. What the fuck? They were like, you the go. Like uh, my fucking thing was like pinging, like off the hook. Like you did yeah. not. How the fuck did you get 6,500 fucking dollars? I said, I tell people don't fucking play with me, yeah. bruh. I, you know, I have a similar story, <laughs> similar story. We had a, a weed guy in our group and old Brett, not, not, years not ago. today's Brett. Years ago. Years ago. <sighs> old Brett. <laughs> he, uh, he, he only owed me $200. <laughs> I'm already with the story. It sucks. I can't wait to no, hear this. It sucks. Uh, it just, it's cause it's nothing I'm proud of. It's I'm not proud of mine but either. This is just. And again, mine were reality. idle threats. Mine were, mine were idle threats. I would never do anything to anybody's kids. I, mine weren't so <laughs> idle. He, uh, you know, he, he came in, you know, I, I'm in the small town in Montana. 
And, uh, and, and mind you, so I'm rolling with these two kids, you know, we're 17 at the time. I've got these two goody two shoes that I'm riding with. And I was like the thug out of all of them. And, uh, but I just get wind that so-and-so is out in the woods doing a bunch of drugs with mm. other mutual friends. I'm like, Oh, okay. I said, well, keep him out there. I want to talk to him. He mm. owes me money. And he's now owed me money for two months. So I, uh, rolled out there and they said, Hey, promise not to do anything to him. And it's just me. Of course. Just me. Yeah. Man, this sucks. But you know, it's just, this was old Brett, but, uh, he owed me money. And so he, I said, Hey, get out of the Jeep. And so he gets out and you know, they're all high. They're all high. And so I'm thinking, you know, someone who's high, I don't know how he's going to act. And so, uh, he comes at me and I said, Hey, you spent $500 on drugs. I know you got it. Right. I know you got money. Where is it? And he brings out his pocket and he shows me change. And I was pissed. I was red. I hit the change up. And then uh, what did I do? I think I had a can of bear spray on me and I just unloaded on a space. Bear spray? Bear I heard spray. that shit is like 10 times worse than like mace, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, worse. It's, it, like worse. it's to the point where your face feels like it's literally on fire and burning like you want to die. I heard you want to die off that so, shit. So Here's what happened. His whole face is covered in rust looking chemical. And he is just standing there. And I'm thinking, okay, what's he going to do? So I need him in the ribs. And then, uh, and then he just still didn't go down. So I need him again. And then he just fell on the ground. And, and I'm like, and so I'm now scared because I'm like, I just killed this guy. You know, you thought you killed him. <laughs> I thought I killed him. <laughs> and so I'm looking down, but I'm still like trying to play the part. Right. Cause I right. got everybody looking at me now. So I told him, I said, you still owe me the money. And I spit on him. And then I got back in the friend's car, the two goody two shoes and they get in and it's quiet. Right. And so I'm like, ah, just throw on some DMX. <laughs> so I, throw on some DMX. I said, let's go. But it let him know that, you know, you weren't ever going to mess with me mm. when it came to taking my money. That was the only thing. You know, I was poor. I was a poor kid and you just don't take my money. And 200 is a lot when you're poor. 200 is a lot. And, uh, and for me in, at that stage in my life, it was more about just the respect. And I know, you know, the code. So I held him to it. And then after that, his whole entourage surrounded me one time. <laughs> and uh, how was that it was well so they surrounded me it was like four or five of them they jump out of this car so i just tapped on my belt line like i had something yeah and and I said, yeah. I said i said i i have enough for every single one of you what is going to go down right now because i took him out i'll take every single one of you out Gang. i had to be crazy right? i had to go look yes. on him and yeah i did Part, yeah. and so they all backed out they all backed down. Like it's not worth it. They, they, they went away and, and, uh, and I, but anyway, I did I, uh, back to school on that, that following Monday, uh, the people he was with, I said, Hey, what's up with homeboy? Did, uh, they're like, Oh, you fucked him up. I'm like, yeah, yeah I know that. But the only thing I'm interested in right now is, is he alive? <laughs> <laughs> and what do they say? They said, yeah. Yeah, he's going to oh, like, They said, yes. you fucked his ribs up. <laughs> you, his, he was loaded with mace. He couldn't even breathe. Uh -huh. They tried to take him to the hospital, but because he was so high on drugs, he refused to go to the hospital. So he had to recuperate at this little <laughs> drug house that they had. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah. God. That's the right you know, I'm like Tretch. I do my dirt up on my lonely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful story. Uh, I mean, sometimes you just got to muscle people to know that you're not one to be played with. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of how I've gotten to be able to get so far in the cannabis game, which we're going to be talking yeah. about. Let's, yeah. I was going to say, um, let's talk about that. We got uh, the, the cannabis line right here for the lovely folks that are watching this on our yeah, YouTube page. I want to give uh, a quick YouTube. shout out yeah. to you guys. Um, so I have a, an array of different people that I work with, um, that I've helped create, that I have, have done a lot of business transactions with, and I only want to make light of the positive things. For sure. So, um, my home girl, she has her, um, could you mind passing them to me really quick? Just so I can know which ones I'm talking about. Here, let's go to the first one right here. Kamiko right here. Um, beautiful woman, 
big time hustler in the Bay Area. She's dropping her own exotics line. I would show you the weed that's in here, but it's actually my panties that I had to <laughs> stuff in here to make it look like there's weed because I was afraid of flying. Roxy doesn't do anything illegal at all. Okay. We're all so by the books over we're here. We're buying the, the books, books over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is also her other strain, Tokyo Lotto. And then this is mine right here, which is the Roxy Blanco Taste Buds. And this is the apple. Now, this actually was my packaging for my edibles. Um, I sold out of all my Roxy Blanco. Um, wow. I had my own strains and, and not my own genetics. And remember, a lot of these things that you see that are in bags, a lot of us brands don't necessarily own the genetics, like the actual strains. We just like to put them in our bags and work with the, the growers. So um, they all sold out. So that's why I don't have my original packaging. Otherwise, I totally would. And then, oh yeah, thank, right. thank you, La Miel. So that cup right there that he's about to pass me. So this is um, only between me and my best friend, Mia Valencia from Santa Rosa. Now this girl right here, let me tell you something. She's one of the biggest hustlers I know. And she's my ride or die. And mm. like, when I tell you, we go back from the second fucking grade. You know, okay. and we are currently walking, working on a huge fucking project. And we've had offers to open dispensaries. We've had offers from some of the biggest people that have a lot of financial backing. But again, um, this is what we need to talk about. And we can we can put this stuff back. Oh, for sure, for sure. Because um, a lot of people DM me. I mean, I'm talking, I get at least 50 to 100 DMs per month from people from all over uh, the, the world, you know, cause you know, Instagram is a big reach, right? Yeah. Um, I get a lot of people who are like, yo, I have 150 K to play with. Oh, I have a couple million to play with. How do I start my own dispensary? How do I get in the Wii game? Let me tell you something right now. Um, when it comes to marijuana, okay. And wanting to get into the marijuana industry in California, let me pull something up for you guys. Okay. Mm. Because a lot of people I'm telling you, Shout out to my boy, Jason Beck, okay? Because he created this network called High at Nine News. And you can follow High them at, at Instagram at High at Nine News. Now, if you are thinking about investing any cash flow into cannabis, I highly suggest you watch all of their episodes. Now, I'm gonna tell you why. It's like going to the University of THC for free. Cause you're going to learn the laws. You're going to learn what's going on with cannabis on a federal level, mm -hmm. on a state level, on a local level, permitting, licensing, the do's, the don'ts. He's giving you guys free game. I watch him daily. Like he's the Joe Rogan of cannabis. Wow. And I tell people, I'm like, the knowledge is free. Quit trying to offer strangers like me money to invest in your cannabis company. Follow these channels on YouTube. He's on YouTube. He's on, uh, what's that one? Twitch. Twitch he's, he's on yeah. Instagram. Like he, his platform is huge. I just went to their studio uh, recently and I was blown away. I, I didn't get to a chance to actually like, sit down and talk to him for too long, but they're doing a massive, like multi-million dollar build out for his building. It's like the fucking ESPN of weed. That's wow. crazy. Like <laughs> multiple studios. I can't even post yeah. the footage yet. Cause it's like still under uh, like construction, but I'm telling people, I'm like, follow this company, um, follow this network because you're going to learn so much about the do's and don'ts. Do not get in bed or do an investment with people you haven't done research with. When people try to offer me money, like, Hey, I have 50 K saved up. Can I invest in your company? I'm like, fuck no, I'm not taking your money, bro. I just don't want the liability. I don't, I know the brands that I've started. Yep. I know how hard it is. A lot of people don't know this, but if in the state of California, and this is just California, if I were to get all of my brands, um, back on shelves. Do you know how much it costs? Cause I'm getting, I'm slowly getting out of cannabis. My, I'm going to tell you guys my next multi-million dollar deal. Okay. Okay. And you guys are getting blown the fuck away because we <laughs> talked about this. Okay. Um, the reason why I am backing out of cannabis in California and just almost entirely is because it's going bankrupt. The price of weed is no longer the standard. It used to be like $1,600. Let's just name a base price for a pound. Yeah. You're getting units, as, uh, pounds of weed as low as $300 now. Oh, wow. Now, if you know anything about the, the market plummeting, that's a huge plummet. Yeah. I know growers who are closing down operations, not because they're getting raided, because they can't afford to pay their growers and their farmers and their and, and the people who are watering, the people who are trimming them. They can't afford to pay their overhead. Why is that? 
Because the system is built again. The way that California state legislation has it and the way that the taxes are, there is no profitability in cannabis. Now, I wish I could divulge more information, which is why I continuously watch High at Nine News okay. because they break it down like on a molecular level okay. of why it's so fucked in California. Now, is cannabis fucked in Canada? No. Is it fucked in Israel? No. Their, their government has it done right so that way everybody wins. In California, you're fucking yourself in the ass with no lube. I'm telling oh, you. Damn. So be very careful when it comes to opening or operating a dispensary or a brand. A lot of people are losing millions and millions of dollars. Damn I know true, people true. who are putting hits out on people because of money that they owe. And I'm like, bro, yeah. don't tell me no names because yeah. I don't want to be indicted. Like don't I tell know, people, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I see no evil here, no evil. Feeling. Like I tell people, I'm like, I don't want to know any of that. Like whatever, whoever owes you money, don't even tell me because it's it, it's gully. You know, people get robbed. People get. I know a three other girls who are like heavy hitters in cannabis one of them was hogtied and thrown in a bathtub like on some kim kardashian shit the other one was robbed at gunpoint twice wow. and the other one has uh done three years in prison Damn. for trafficking across state lines so i'm blessed that i've never had any of these things happen yeah. my home invasion that just happened three months ago is the first time roxy's ever gotten played in cannabis and i've been in the cannabis cannabis game for 20 fucking years 20 fucking years. Wow. I started this shit at 19. I'm going to be 38. So 19 years. And, and, and Two decades. And it seems like you said, like, to find a different avenue you want to go down into, like you said, this this uh, new venture, th this new venture, right? Just to get yourself out of that, which I definitely condone. I hope you do. So that way you get away from all the negativity, I guess you could say, right, that comes around with the business because there's always seems to be in a sense, like in any business, there's always a downside of everything, but not probably not that level. So go into your new deal. Okay, so wait, first, wait, oh, wait, go ahead. real quick, before we go into the new stuff, let's talk about your accolades. Let's yeah. talk about why you have the weight to talk about what you're talking about. For sure. I stand on a lot of things, right? Yeah. I know uh, the brands, the corporations, the companies, the people that I have helped start their careers. I've helped ignite the fire. I've helped the marketing. I've done a lot. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to drop names because I Sometimes you can't. I can't like, and it's not, it's not me being afraid legally, Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and, um, I could just say I've helped create some of the greatest and most known things in cannabis. And it's kind of sad because as a woman, you get played, you know, and you just got to know how to one up them, mm. you know, and you got to just learn how to kind of mitigate risk all while staying out of drama, staying out of legal issues and try to like play chess, not checkers. Mm, sure. So I'm trying to build myself around these things. Now, as far as, of, as accomplishments, I've worked HempCon, I've worked Kushstock, um, High Times. Like if you guys know anything about um, festivals when it comes to like any type of conventions or anything, I've worked with the best of them. Um, I remember High Times Magazine approaching me at my booth. Mind you, that booth was $10,000. Wow. To, that our company, the people who I, I was working under paid for, uh -huh. they paid 10 grand on my behalf for my own booth because they believed in me that much. Now, I ended up getting cut from the team, the distribution team, because the wife was jealous of me. Mm -hmm. She thought I wanted her husband. <laughs> I'm going to look at the camera. Yeah, look right there. I <laughs> want money, bitch. I, okay, I, first of all, me and your husband and you always talk together. I was never just texting him on the low or sending him booty shots. Like, I, I told her, I respect you. I respect your family, your children. This is all business. But when women feel like they see a younger, hotter, whatever. Like a threat, right? A threat. Yeah, yeah. It poses a threat. And it's like, anyways, their company ended up dissolving. Everyone went their own ways. Everybody burned each other from what I last heard. Um, it's sad, you know? So in a way, God saved me from that situation mm. because it was a shit show to begin with. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I mean, that to me, high times coming up to me and them saying, and again, and a lot of people in the cannabis industry have a lot of negative things to say about high times. I don't. Um, all I know is they approached me saying that they wanted to give me the cover of High Times Magazine wow. for being a female cannabis entrepreneur. Wow. And I kind of told them my background of who I helped start and was behind. And they're like, you? I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At the age of 19, I met these guys. And wow. they were like, wow. They're like, let's give you the cover. And I was like, really? The woman who was like the head of, I forget her name, gave me her business card. Tell me why I'm so fucking mad. Because my idea was brilliant. I was like, what I want to do, because I was doing um, edibles. That was like my main thing. I was like, I want to be sitting like Tony Montana at a fucking desk, like slouched back. Nice. With like an open collar, like business outfit. And just like 
edibles and weed everywhere. Instead of cocaine. Like, yeah, instead of cocaine. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, I wanted, like, a Scarface cover. And they're like, that's fucking brilliant. We like the way you're thinking. I'm like, uh, let's call it the queen of edibles or the queen of cannabis or something, you know? Because when they found out, like, when I gave them my 20-minute story and, like, summed it up, they're like, dude, you're fucking epic. Yeah. Like, how come we've never heard of you? I'm like, a lot of the big players who pull the strings are behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get the glory. We let the fucking, the, the goon do it. Yeah. You know, we let the puppet you do it. The face the to the project. Yeah, yeah. Else, yeah. But, but a lot of these people that you look up to, they're just the face. Yeah. They're not the real hustlers. Wow. They're not the ones uh, taking the risks. They're not the ones facing the time. They let the minions do it. Wow. And I mean, I, I can admit, I was played, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm working on multi-million dollar productions i have offers on the table from some of the biggest streaming platforms <laughs> which i can't really talk about just yet legally but i'm 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 doing deals you know what I'm, saying? I'm working with some of the best of them right now um i'm working on a project and i really can't say too much about it but they're gonna be some of the greatest hip-hop artists most legendary artists in the nation wow. that I will be working with them. And I can't even give too much more information because it'll already kind of, when you think of the greats, there's like really, I'd say at least a good five people. Yeah. I can't name who it is, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, but they want to, they, they have given me opportunity to, to work with me. And I'm just trying to make sure that everything is good, that they get ownership, that they get residuals, royalties. I'm making sure this is not a Roxy money move for me. Yeah. I, I, I know that once we get this deal done, that I am, I'm going to have a stamp on my resume for doing for doing this deal that is huge. and then it's going to open up green lights for me to do other deals yeah. so i'm going to take the low percentage of whatever i can get i don't mind not making the money off that i mind just getting my stamp of approval and success off that and then branching off my with my production company because there is a production company that I, I created and there's a record label that i created and i'm working with some of the best fucking wow. artists in the west coast and i can't even name drop them uh, yet yeah. so when, it's like when I'm, you can talk about this stuff when this stuff i'm coming Coming back. Do yeah. a follow up. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm gonna. You're gonna see footage all over Instagram. Oh. Once these things are like going on tour and we're relaunching all this shit and we're able to talk about it. Oh, my Instagram's gonna be wild. Um, we didn't, we were talked about my Instagram page being deleted. Yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, uh, another, you... another one of my accolades. And yeah. let's, let's talk about how <laughs> I've been deleted 14 times, but the peak of my career on Instagram, my influential right. career, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had over 106,000 followers on Instagram at yeah. one point. Yeah. And that doesn't seem like a lot. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't. Think about it. Cause there's women out there who have have uh, 2 million followers. Yeah. There's women who have like 52,000 or 52 million, a hundred, like I think Kim Kardashian's at what, like 200 million followers. Yeah, but she's someone that everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows yeah. You are a name that nobody, yeah, nobody knows. knows. And yeah. you have Independently in a sense, right? Yeah. And I don't have a sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, no not that I know tape. of. <laughs> uh, I hope not. <laughs> How much did I drink that night? Right. No, I'm just kidding. So, so back to you were going though about your project, right? It, it just, I, I love the thing I love about just the way you think. It, it's always something that stuck out with me when you said, uh, I think you posted on some of your stories that it's uh, when I eat, everybody at my table is going to eat. So that goes along with what you're saying, right? Everything mm -hmm. that's going to be involved with this. You know, I'm not going to enjoy the fruits of my leverage just myself. I'm going to spread it out with everybody that's involved with this. I don't care if I get the smaller percentage, at least at least so I know it's on, like you said, it's on your resume now, right? Yes, it's so, a resume builder. Exactly. So when you go forward, multiple doors are going to open for you. For so me. And I'll be able to venture. negotiate deals better in my favor. Yeah. I, I'm in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Like like I said, one of the companies that I help create that's allegedly worth almost half a billion dollars. You know, I was in it for the that long haul. Insane, I, yeah. I, 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 I was in it for the long haul and I had loyalty towards them. I mean, this guy called me his sister. Mm, yeah. he, he, I would wake up at his house because my, you know, I can't say too much, but we were all, you know, friends and I was dating one of his friends and, you know, his dad would wake up in the morning and make us coffee and pancakes. You know, there was uh, Thanksgiving potlucks. There was birthday parties. There was baby showers that we were all at. There was like, all types close. of things. Things. Yeah, it wasn't just like, oh, I saw him a couple of like I was around for years. Yeah. I was the backbone to a lot of shit. But sometimes, you know, you just got to kind of work in silence. And I don't ever pray on um, my enemies. I pray over them. 
you know, because yeah. I, I I know that I might be angry. I might say some fucked up shit. I might call you out. But at the end of the day, I really just pray that you get your life together because you shouldn't be worried about me. You should be worried about you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like for and, real. And and to build on that um, with everything that you've already been through, you've overcome every single obstacle and, that's and always come out stronger Thank it, you. That's the thing Shape too. my character. Yeah, at least it's going to build you up as a person as well because you've already been through at your lowest or your lowest. I think this is going to just build you up to make you even stronger for the future what's to come. You know the, you know the game now, right? So you know how to maneuver and shift and just, uh, you know, come out on the better end now of things. So it's it's just like a, a life lesson learned. Oh, it's, oh totally, sure. totally. And, and I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you know, we hear you're doing a documentary. I've been working on this documentary since I was 19. People don't know that. And people are like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, at a young age, I knew I was going to be a somebody. Mm. I knew I was going to have to take some high risks. I knew I was going to have to possibly face prison time. I knew that, wow. you know? And I, and I was like, this is, but that's what comes with the game. A lot of people who get into the, the Wii game or get into the, the music game, they're like, oh, I can do this in the third. But then when push comes to shove, they're the first ones to snitch. Yeah. Mm. They're the first ones to write a statement on somebody, you know? And I tell people, I'm like, Roxy's never been a snitch. Ever. And I took a lot of losses for people who could be doing 15 years in prison. And I'm not even talking about people that I um, that are my ops. I'm talking about people who have no idea I did time for them mm. because I knew that if I ran their name out to the government, that they can be hit with an indictment. So I did the time for them. And I, and I just took it and I never spoke on it because I'm like, I know the repercussions. When you speak on people in the streets and you write a statement on somebody and they do 15 years, their people are going to come kill you. Mm, yeah. There's definitely different rules, it, right? Yeah, there's that, different, the, that, I yeah. stick to the code. Yeah. You know, like when I met Young Jeezy, let me tell you something right now. This this shirt right here, I still don't remember how I got it. I, I was at the Young Jeezy concert. Snowman. The snowman. <laughs> and uh, again, he's one of my top five. You know, uh -huh. like we were talking about Tupac. Yeah. Um, Jay-Z. Uh, who else? Come on? Jeezy. I'm trying to think of the other two. Kanye West. Oh, yeah. I absolutely fucking love him. And I think the fifth person, well, I would have to say Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher. And I'm not going in any particular order. I love all of these men. Like, I, 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 I don't idolize them. I feel like I sympathize with them. I mm. empathize with them because a lot of this shit that they rapped about, best believe it, women go through it too. Wow. You know, we take the fucking risk too. We don't, we don't get the the um, street cred. And it's not like women should be going out there trying to get street cred. That's not the goal, right? But you have to understand, like, when you run with the best of them, you deserve those accolades too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because I don't go around toting a gun and I have bodies under my body, I don't never kill nobody. I never rob nobody. But best believe, I would have done time for these people. Yeah. The people, the company I'm talking about, I could have done years in prison. You know what I'm saying? And it's Damn. just like, but I stayed down, you know, I stayed 10 toes down and I'm, I'm alive and I'm free for a fucking reason, yeah. you know? But when I, I got my mom a house at the age of 25. Wow. And a wow. lot of people like, no, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. Roxy didn't buy it. Okay. I was trapping so hard back in the day. I was making all types of fucking money. Um, I was able to get my mom a beautiful three bedroom, like customized home with like marble floors and Coke white kitchen countertops and vaulted ceilings and manicured lawn. We're, we were poor, mm. like dirt fucking poor, like trailer park poor. Yeah. And I tell people, I'm like, you have to understand when you come from nothing, it, it gives you this, it shapes your character yep. to want more. Yep. Yeah. Um, some people are comfortable living that for their whole life. Not me. You know, so when I listened to Thug Motivation 101, which is one of my favorite trap albums of all time, mm. when I was trapping for years, um, I remember telling myself, I'm like, I'm going to get my mom a house when I graduate college. Three months after I graduated college, I got my mom that house. I put like $7,000 down. Plus I was paying the rent, which is like $2,100 a month, plus like $400 in utility. So I was paying $2,500 a month wow. for my mom to have a house. Little would I have known she would have died like what, two and a half years later from cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And, it, and thank you. Thank you for saying that. It's, it's something that I kind of glaze over because I don't I try not to internalize it. You know, like I could break down and cry. I've done that before, you know, but I look at it as like, I'm glad I did it. Because had I known that she again, I didn't do this because she was diagnosed. I didn't know. We didn't know she was diagnosed with cancer until five months before she died. It was, that's how quick she died. It wasn't like she was, some people can live 10 years with cancer. Mm. We didn't find out till five months before her, like the day she passed. So I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I put that money down and I paid that rent because I would have had so many regrets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, why did I do more for my mom? When I see a lot of these drug dealers talking about they make 20 bands a month or 50 bands a month or even 20 bands a day, I'm like, 
why is your mom still living on Section 8? Mm. Why, why aren't your kids have, go to private school or have a trust fund? Why don't you have a life insurance policy? Yeah, you might have like a Maserati or a G-Wagon and live in a fucking nice uh, $3,500 a month that you're paying rent in a house for yourself. But what are you doing for your family? Yep. Uh, what exactly. are you doing for your kids? What are you doing for your mom? That short-sighted. It, that yeah. short, it's, it's a selfishness. It is. Yeah, it's an way. ego. It's an ego. A for lot sure. of these big weed brands that you see, ego. Mm. You really get down to the brass tacks. There's no fucking money there. Yeah. I'm it's almost like you. setting that perception that people want to see that you're living this lavish lifestyle. But I think many people have different definitions of rich. I mean, just just to, for me, like being rich is like being able to take care of your loved ones, to your your most immediate family, and like you said, like going off with what you were saying, to know that at least you did it. That whole that's I hold that like that, I respect that because you, you did that for your mom. Thank you. And I know. Rest in peace to your mother. Yes, she'd be you. proud of you, like yeah. for knowing thank that you, you did that. And I bet you. you that meant so much. And I think um, you said it yourself that 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 shit meant the most to you. That you did that. Zero regrets. Yeah. I always say, if I could have done it again, I would have got her a bigger house, twice the size. Wow. You know, and I would have gone ten times harder. You know, but I look at life, and I'm telling these these men and women because I like to inspire both. both. Right. Yep. I'm not just. Uh, I am pro women, but I'm also pro everybody. I want to see everybody who comes from the struggle rise up. I don't care about your ethnic background. I don't care even if you came from money and your parents cut you off and you had to get back on your own two feet. I'm in it for everybody. I want to see everybody come up and win. And yeah. it's, it's not an ego thing. It's not a me thing. It's a we thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, when it comes to, I don't mind being the cocinera. Like in yeah, Spanish, yeah. that means the cook. I like cooking up things and feeding people. I feed everybody first. I don't mind getting the crumbs because I see the bigger picture because guess what? When I go starving, all these people are going to give me plates. Mm. That's some Dame Dash. You know who Dame Dash is? I, I met him at the airport. Oh, oh are you serious? He helped me carry my luggage because I was struggling. <laughs> oh, he grabbed my. my luggage for me at LAX. He's like, excuse me, miss, you need some help? I was like, aren't you Dame Dash? He's like, yeah. And I was like, I'm honored. I'm like, why are you? I'm like, uh, thank you. And he's like, no, how, you're fine. You're fine. Have a good day, miss. And he just like helped me with my luggage in the car. Wow. And, then he, and then he walked so, away. So, so he said something so similar to wow. what you just said. He's like, I like having a group, what would you call it, the circle of success? Because it's not fair how one person can look rich from that group. It's more balling or more better if all, all the people in my circle are richest too. Because that way, if one goes broke, at least I can get 100000 from you or 500 bucks from you. And I'm rich again. Facts. But But to know that like we're all successful not just one person he's like how does it look like if we all roll up in one nice car I, like i'd rather have my crew roll up in all nice cars he's yeah. like how, yeah. how does that make any sense why does one so, person need to have a a, a phantom and yeah. all your boys are in hondas yeah. right. and can't exactly. pay rent exactly and, and, and this is why i give credit to benny the butcher because not only did all of his boys stay down together they really all became millionaires together yeah. okay shout out to bsf i fucking love them if you guys want to learn like listen and learn some real game listen to anything um griselda i'm with the whole griselda fucking movement like they are the fucking truth like i tell him like he's like a mixture of like jeezy and tupac he's in his own lane though he's a like lyricist. Yeah, he's, he's, a yeah, lyricist, yeah. he's a lyricist and he speaks on real shit a lot of these rappers are speaking fables yeah. Like the lies, right. like Especially nowadays, blatant yeah. lies just to sell records. And he's and he's not even promoting this shit. He's saying, yo, I had to do this shit just to get where I am. Now I'm making legit money. I'm I'm blessed. And he, he has a song that said it could have been me. Or it talks about that. He's like, yo, anytime I have a homie from, from the pen giving me a call, I always think that could have been me. I put money on commissary. That could have been me. Yeah. He talks about like I look up for my dogs because that could have been me. That when my homie's in the grave, that could have been me. Wow. Yeah. You gotta realize that. Like I put myself in situations where I think about my girl who did three years when I think about my girl who had her um, gun pointed to her face two times I mean I kind of was too but she literally got robbed for all her pounds of weed like and it wasn't just a regular gun it was like some really big shit with a couple of guys she could have lost her life and she lost like fifteen thousand dollars with the weed so I mean I think of these things I'm like that could have been me you know so I always try to look out for people I do good business I keep my name out the mud you know I don't owe nobody no fucking money like I stand on my words and I tell mm -hmm. people your word has to be impeccable mm -hmm. when you read the book the 48 laws of power the art of war um the the four agreements there's again I'm 
I'm going to list you guys. I'll tell you the, the books that I get, you guys. And I'll even be doing free giveaways on my Snapchat. Because I always buy these books and I'll autograph them. I'll write a word. I'll write some words out to you. I, I do giveaways all the time. So you guys make sure you guys follow me on Instagram again at hey. Roxy Blanco underscore official and at the Hope Dealer LA. Um, but I always try to just give motivation. You know what I'm saying? And read, read, read. Get off TikTok. Get off Instagram. Yes, if you're going to do it, try to make some money. But think about the Wall Street Journal. Think about the LA Times. Stay in tune with politics. Know what's going on with the economy. Read the market. Understand crypto. Understand real estate. Understand finance. It's not just going to be on a three-second TikTok reel that you yeah, guys, yeah. like, that's what we're programmed to do. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Yep. But the real knowledge is in books, in mm. magazines, 100%. and articles, MSN, Fox, all these other, you can you can learn a little bit about everything. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Nothing wrong sure. with that. Wow. Well... <laughs> I think now we're at the point where we want to descend. Uh, I think all three of us uh, have questions we want to ask you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, whoever you want to start with, we can go uh, and, and ask a question. Brad, Brad. Yeah, let's bring Brad, Brad into the mix. Yeah, yeah. This, right now is the Q&A segment, Q &A. so y'all definitely want to tune in. Each one of them are going to ask me a random question about anything, and I'm going to keep it short so that way we can go to the next person. Definitely. All right. Roxy, thanks for having us. Well, thanks for... Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. <laughs> uh, I've been dying to ask you a few questions. One I have for you is, um, since I'm a sports guy, uh -huh. do you have any, uh, maybe any dirt on any athletes? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody sneak it to those DMs? Uh, yeah. Well, it, I, think, I think a better question is like any experiences with them. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have. Oh. I have. <laughs> of course, of course. And I mean... I'm talking about Super Bowl championship winners. <laughs> He's like, Ooh. And I'm going to keep it vague. Yeah. Because one Ro one thing Roxy don't do is she don't say no names, okay? I keep uh, it player. Keep I'm it to a, the streets. I'm, keep a, it to the I'm street. a pimp. I'm a player, okay? No, no, I'm not kidding. No, no, no. But honestly, me me and this one particular, one of, one of them, because there, there was two. Um, and again, I can't say names. Um, and there were different times, way separated apart. You know, one was a brief dating experience. The other one was a little bit longer. And he was, they're both great guys. Um, they've both reached out to me numerous times since we've lost contact. And that's how I know I'm a good woman. Because when the guy reaches out to you months or years later, that means that you're memorable to him. Mm. And it's not even about just, oh, send me a picture of your pussy. It's like, how have you been? I want to see you again. That means I meant something to them, mm. you know, and um, connected with them I can, on a, level. Yeah, a different level. It was just deeper than sex. Mm -hmm. You know, they saw they see my trajectory. They see where I'm going. They're like, yo, like I really fumbled the ball, not taking her seriously, you know. So, um, yes, to answer that. But anything like salacious, um, I'm trying to think like I could say, well, one of them, the super the Super Bowl championship dude um we, we used to have like sex everywhere in his house like he Whoa. one thing about these athletes and oh my god my man's gonna kill me oh my god he's gonna, and we're gonna talk about oh past my god this, past oh, okay. this is the past this is the past yeah. this is way yeah you know what i'm saying like and i was younger i was yeah <laughs> and i was younger you know but um like it was just but it was deeper than that like he opened up to me about a lot of things and um unfortunately he had to move to the other side of the country for work purposes, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't, again, I don't want to say no keep team. It vague, keep it vague. Yeah, yeah. Keep it vague. But, um, but we're still great. And then the other one, I believe he lives, I shouldn't even say what state, but he now has a child and I see pictures. He actually Venmoed me money to talk to me. Wow. And I was like, cause I think I blocked him or I like, I, I didn't block him. I think he lost, oh, he lost my Instagram. Cause I, I didn't have a fallout with him either. Um, he lost my Instagram. So he Venmoed me. And then he's like, how have you been? And I was like, oh my God, it's so-and-so. And then I think I added him on Instagram. I'm like, oh, I've been really good. Congratulations on the baby. This and that. He's like, I'd love to see you or something. Just kept it positive. And I think I just left him on red. Cause I was already dating somebody else. So okay, like, I'm not a enough. cheater. I'm not fair a cheater. Enough. I'm very loyal. Very, very loyal. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the athletes. Mm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you got a three, a three for one combo right there. Yeah. Right? Right. So Homer Simpson, my way out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's Brad for you. Our third guy right there. Yeah, yeah, Shout Brad, out Brad. Brad. Be rad. <laughs> yeah. He's our sports guy. So Definitely, yeah. naturally he's going to go there. <laughs> um, so it's sort of in relation to that question. Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to picture like what kind of guy is, is capable <laughs> to, to, to date you. You yeah. said you're dating. And so yeah. what are the type of a guy does that take? 
Well, this you're is super ambitious yeah. and you're Thank everywhere. You. And yeah. obviously, you know, like you get this attention from every direction. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot for a typical it husband, is. boyfriend, boyfriend. Yeah. significant other to deal with. Yeah. So how, how do I uh, figure that out? Um, I always tell women and I was kind of going on a rant about this the other day on social media. Um, keep your love life private as possible. I'm not saying don't ever post your kids or your family at a barbecue or a birthday party. Cause again, some of you just have social media just for your friends and family. Not everyone's trying to be an influencer or yep. an entrepreneur, but I'm talking about for the women who are actually striving for like big things and to be known like on a national or international level, you have to protect your love life and your children because you can make enemies without even knowing it. Mm. And if they know where your kid goes to school, what your kid looks like, what your partner looks like, there are people who are going to dig up dirt on you and try to DM or find that person and exploit you or extort you. Wow. And or or hurt them. And I know this because I have dealt with this firsthand. Um, with my current relationship, and I'm gonna be 100. It's not easy right now. We we've been going through some some things um, since, you know, the, the last six months, you know, mm -hmm. well, I should say the last three months since everything kind of happened and nothing to say bad against him. Yeah. Um, I, I was involved in the situation that happened with my home invasion. It was scary. Um, and without telling too much of my private life, I'll say this. He has to be very patient and understanding, which he is. Mm. And he's not somebody who's in the media scene at all. Okay. And that's Low what key. I and that's what I wanted. And I yeah. want to tell women this. There's a lot of glitz and glamour when you're dealing with men in media or celebrity or music or athletes. And I don't understand why so many women look over nine to five men or just small business owner men. Mm. There's nothing wrong. I feel like if anything, you're gonna have a higher level of success dealing with a and not saying an average, but like just somebody who's more low key than you would doing trying to date a celebrity or athlete sure. because you're you're mitigating your risk mm. you have to think about it when you have a high powered man who makes all this money he's got a lot of options boo mm -hmm. and if they're younger than you hotter than you funner than you you're just one of many so be realistic you know like there's a lot of great men that get overlooked and I hate that. Like, I, I feel like it really is a woman's world, even though it's a man's world, because women can really kind of pick and choose who they want to date. Men just kind of have to like who they can get. You know what I'm saying? But a woman gets her body done, gets her teeth done, gets everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some makeup. It's like, it's like, damn, she's a whole different person. Now she can get whoever the fuck she wants. Sure. Yeah. Men don't have that option. Yeah, they sure. really don't. You got to really hit the gym. You got to do, you know, you got to do all types of crazy shit. Or so make it's more like money. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of money. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's, a, I, I like truly believe it's easier for women to make money than it is for men now. Mm. You know, like it's easy for a woman, like these women who are selling toenail clippings or like dirty underwear and making over. Feet picks. O over in feet picks yeah, and making over wild? 200k a year yep. insane that's you know insane. and it's like a, a guy has to work three jobs to make that and zero sleep yeah. you know so like the average guy you know so yeah. it's just like you just kind of got to be um with some i'd say for me um the type of man that i i love and who i have right now is someone who's very patient understanding flexible and he's not controlling mm. you have to realize that when you have a woman who's very ambitious um very outspoken that there's gonna be tension at times but i respect him i'm loyal to him i let him be the man of the house if he tells me i don't like this take this down it's deleted mm. you know what i'm saying or yeah. i don't want you out there saying that that's a bad look trust me there's been periods of times where we weren't talking, you know, the relationships are never easy, but first and foremost, I have to respect him. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm able to keep right. it going right now. And, and awesome. I pray that this relationship works out. I really love this man. Yeah. Um, I'll never air him out. Even I told him, I said, even if we break up and we just remain friends, I'll never shed you in a bad light. Cause you were one of the greatest men I ever had. Mm -hmm. And he's like, thank you, baby. I love you. And I'm like, I love you too. Aww. But you know, but it's not easy. Don't be wrong. Like shit is not all sweet right now, but I'm, I'm not here to air out my personal business. I'm just here <laughs> to say that, you know, love, Love exists, but it does take a certain caliber of a man to be patient with me. Yeah, for you sure. Know? For sure. Okay, so I got a Thank question. You. If okay. you could tell young Roxy at the, at the age of now the the best two pieces of advice, what would that be? Two pieces of advice to the younger Roxy. Younger Roxy. Like, like the age fresh of, out of high school, fresh out of high into school. the world, into you know, into this world. Uh, what would you what would you tell her? Oh, there's just uh, so many things. Oh, oh, that which brings me to I am releasing not one but two books. Okay. 
Okay. Wow. And I'm actually in the been working on these books, um, for the last two years. Um, one of my books was stolen the laptop <laughs> that was stolen in my home invasion. Yeah. I lost everything. Like I said, they even hacked my emails and changed my passwords. I, there's certain emails I can't even get into where I was back hard, hard, hard driving it to like back driving it to wherever it's called. Yeah. Um, so that sucks. Cause I have to start from scratch. <laughs> Sure. So um, now I know to send it, uh, my books out when I'm writing to every email and have multiple hard drives hidden probably in a safety deposit at a bank just in case that happens again. But um, I don't mind starting from scratch, you know, like I remember the things I was writing about. But um, I think my first words of advice to younger Roxy and just to younger girls in general, and I'm talking girls fresh out of high school, fresh out of college, is don't let people box you in. Okay. And what I mean by that is you are going to constantly be told what you can't do, how hard things are, how expensive things are, what a waste of time things are. You're going to be telling your people are going to be telling you all their failures because they're going to try to help you. But in reality, that's limiting your mindset. Don't let people tell you, oh, you can't have multiple careers or you can't have all these businesses. How are you going to stop? Listen to your intuition. Now, if you're doing too much and going crazy or owing people money and going broke or being homeless, then you should probably start listening to your friends. Yeah, you know, better. if you're going about things the wrong way. But if you're going about things the right way, be ambitious. Mm. Aim for the fucking stars. Mm. Do whatever it is that you want to fucking do. Don't let nobody. You're going to have a lot of friends and a lot of family who are not going to support you. And I tell people, when you start businesses, do not expect a dollar from anyone who's in your friendship circle or your family circle. Those are the least ones to fucking support you when you start a business. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just a waste of time. And you might feel a way like, hey, can you do a shout out or repost or, you know, purchase something and they might leave you on scene. Don't air them out. Don't be angry. A lot of people are either broke or they're jealous. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to start making money, start aiming at the strangers, you know, and if you want to learn how to market your social media and how to build up thousands of followers, again, follow me at Roxy Blanco underscore official. <laughs> I'm going to be giving you guys pro tips. Right. <laughs> and, and then the second thing um, I would say is, and I don't like the words, don't trust nobody, but remember that trust is to be earned, just like respect. You don't just give people trust off the rip. And I think at a young age, when I got involved with these corporations, with these people, with these business deals, I trusted so much because I wanted to believe I was a part of something great. Yeah. And I wanted to believe in the long haul and the loyalty and the respect. But you got to remember, not everybody's built like you. Yeah. And I had to learn that the hard way, you know? So just remember that trust and respect is to be earned, not given. And take that with you in every relationship, every job, every career choice, every friendship, which is most important. Who your friends are, your tribe is your vibe. If you're around killers and thieves, you're going to become one. If you're around hoes and prostitutes, you're going to become one. So I tell you, there's nothing wrong with having, I have friends who are pimps, drug dealers, killers, CEO dudes, real estate dudes, you know, uh, guys who work at mechanic shops, like nine to five pet boys, uh, Uber drivers. I have friends from walks of all lives. But at the end of the day, like who I actually surround myself with, like on a regular basis are people who are aligned with me, who have the same morals and values and characters as me. And uh, I guess that's kind of... My, my okay. answer. One thing you were talking about trust, it, it brought up a saying that I heard back in the day. Um, sim this is similar to it, not exact, but it says trust can be broken in just a few seconds, but takes uh, years to heal. Mm. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Power of that. All right. Um, yeah. No. So, I mean, we've talked about a lot and you've shared your story from the beginning to where we are now to where we're talking about what's to come. And, and that's when I'm going to be coming back for another interview. Definitely. And so this yeah. will be the first Whether it's going to be in six months from now, maybe sooner, or maybe even a little bit longer, there's going to be more. So you guys need to keep following these guys because this isn't just one of great episodes. They have plenty. If you guys follow them, again, you guys make your drop. Yeah, what, what, what's the name of your guys' podcast? Beyond Expedition Podcast. Yeah. There we go, baby. The one and only, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But of course. <laughs> but, you know, you, you came from your humble beginnings and one thing that I've, I've seen in your story and that I just keep getting a visual of is that rose that grew from the concrete. Thank and you. it's just like you, you see the, 
that thing that, you know, people can can look at it and say, hey, that ain't supposed to be growing there. That ain't supposed to be doing. Why, why are the, the uh, leaves wilted or whatever? Mm-hmm. But people don't realize that is a rose that grew Ooh, from, from the concrete. The crack of the concrete. Yes. yes. And people are like, you know what? I, I'm looked at two ways because some people are going to look at a rose, right? And they're going to yeah. be like, damn, it's so beautiful. It's colorful. It It smells great. But then, damn, look at the thorns. Yeah. That could hurt me. So it's like the duality of that. I, people look at me both ways. Like I said, I have a lot of people who love me and a lot of people who hate me. Mm-hmm. But thank you for saying that. That's actually one of my favorite books with Tupac yeah. is The Rose That Grew From Concrete. And it's all, it's all his poetry. And shout out to the whole Tupac estate and family. I have nothing but love. Um, shout out to Ray Love. Shout out to so many people in the Bay Area who I just absolutely admire and look up to. Um, I also wanted to give you guys a gift and give you guys a shout out before... <laughs> We head out because this is something that I think is going to be monumental because I see the trajectory you guys are going to. And (laughs) I'm so excited to see how big it's going to be. So I have a trophy because you guys are some fucking winners here, okay? And we're going to get a little placard made that has your guys' name and your podcast here. And I just want to hand this to you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's very expensive, as you can tell. 24 (laughs) characters. I'm going to wear it around my neck. You guys earned that. You guys earned that. So thank you. No, thank you for having me here, you <laughs> of course, guys. Of course. So it's, uh, uh, again, thank you for taking the time to come out and, and do this episode with us. And like you said before, I hope there's many more to come because yeah. if it's the there one thing, be. if it's the one thing we want to see with everybody we've touched base with, whatever field that they're in, we want to see everybody succeed just as much as, like you say, you want to w- see everybody that you know or done business, business with to win. succeed as well, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. we wish the best for you and we wish nothing but the very best oh, in your future thank endeavors. You so, so much. Uh, thank you. Let guys. the people know where they can get in contact with you uh just all drop all your social tags yeah, and let the people so know if you guys youtube me roxy sabella i'll be adding um a, i'm gonna be having a culinary cooking page i'm gonna nice. be dropping my favorite family recipes nice. um even just recipes that i see people doing on tiktok and i'm like bro i wouldn't have just had those five ingredients i know how to make it t- taste 10 times better i'm gonna add this and then fry it like this and then i do my own version of it and i'm like I'm pretty, I'm pretty dope on social media. I should have a YouTube channel. So that's going to be dropping. I have two books coming. I have a few productions under the way. And if you guys want to follow me on my social media. So for Twitter, I believe it's at Roxy Sabella, which is now X. So, you know, yeah. that's what they, that's, that's what Elon must change it to, right? Yeah. The yeah, X is yeah. formerly known as Twitter. And then um, for my Instagram, it's Roxy Blanco underscore official. And my other page is at the Hope Dealer LA. And I'm trying to think of what else do I have? Snapchat. You got to pay for that, baby. So just DM me, <laughs> new free. Snapchat. You're going to learn how to save money, make money, invest money, and really scale your business to the next level. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you have it. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And for us, for all of you newcomers that are uh, joined by the podcast, definitely follow us on Instagram, Beyond Expedition Podcast, um, where you will have the li- links everywhere uh, in our bio that'll take you to all the major streaming platforms we're available on. On YouTube, YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that jazz. And just uh, stay up to date with all the latest and greatest. Yeah. But we're going to sign out. We'll catch you in the next one. Rocks again, thank you for coming by. <laughs> thank you for and, having uh, me. Have an awesome day, people. And we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>